Hello guys, welcome to this next episode. We've got one hour or more amazing drops for you guys. Some cool tips and tricks coming ahead of you. I'm here in the Brick headquarters with my good old friend, my great colleague, Yoji, sitting beside me, who's gonna take the lead today and gonna introduce you this amazing project we prepared for you. Yoji, maybe if you want to say a few words about yourself, Yes, of course. Let yourself known. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm Jozef Brože. I'm working for Brick uh, for seven years. Uh, I'm a work group leader, actually, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then let's kick it in. Let's open the files. All right, so let's jump into it. As I said, Yoji is gonna show you guys everything what we've been up to on this project. Oh, we made some incredible drops for this one but first we thought we'd just say a few words about the project itself this is a project which uh, we've been uh, working on in collaboration for Zaha Hadid architects and we are just really proud of this project because it's been a winning one a very prestigious project Yoji and and his team did an amazing job and uh, it was very successful just to show you roughly what is this project? Uh, it's been featured on, on many sites, uh, on Design Boom with our images that we were really proud of. Also on Arch Daily, featured uh, almost all of our uh, images. It's a tower project, as you can see, um, in the middle of Shenzhen Bay. Shenzhen Bay, if you don't know, is a great technical and business hub of China. This, this um, area of it is called the Shenzhen Bay Super Headquarters and this is the base uh, of it and this tower is gonna be a, a landmark of, of this area, a real, real uh, business hub. The tower itself is a 400 meter tall tower which is uh, pretty big, gonna be visible from, from everywhere and a beautiful design. Of course, uh, we fell in love with it uh, from the first time. Also, it was very interesting to hear the um, architects, uh, what they were saying about the project. The project started as we usually start with any projects. Yeah. We, we had a, a long discussion with the architects. They, they explained us the project uh, in detail and we learned a lot about it. We try to focus on the key features of this project whenever we were starting to work on an image for it. Maybe we will first open the, the files and when we rotate around, we will let you guys know um, what these key features were, what we were focusing on, um, what were the main design intents of this, this project and, and how did it drive us to create these. Incredible drafts. Yes, again. <laughs> <laughs> I, su I was super proud of my team. We were really excited about this project because we have a lot of nice projects, but it's a very special moment when we can touch a Zaha building. Maybe let's, let's just open the files and while we rotate around, we can tell you a bit more about the building itself, how it works and what was the main design intent of the architects. Luckily, we were able uh, to be in close contact with the, the lead architects and even the project di director at Zaha. Even before we started working on drafts, we were able to uh, know much, much more of the projects. When, whenever we could put our hands on the, the model, we, we already knew what are the key features. Just wanted to show you uh, two uh, main elements of it. One is that the project itself has great space in the middle, uh, which serves the purpose of, uh, of space that continues from the neighboring park. I would say that maybe that's the main uh, design intent here, um, to have, have this space in a way that it continues from the park next to the tower and there's a park where all the metro lines and even a bus station meet and this is one of the key landscape features of this area and uh, this landscape uh, winds up is meandering up into the tower if we look at it from top view maybe you can see that the park climbs up comes in and climbs up into the tower into this hole 
and uh, basically it creates a continuous walkable uh, landscape all the way into the middle of the tower. What I really like, as you can see, the tower from the paving to the sky is changing. It's really dynamic. I really love this tower. It's a bit different than the others. Some other features that we, we had to highlight in this project were these terraces. Another uh, great feature uh, of the project is, is uh, how the outer shell of the tower works with the inner core. Uh, it's two different materials. Actually, both of them are glass, but, but two different types of glass. The outer shell uh, was uh, supposed to look like a solid surface and the inner core like a see-through transparent volume. So the tower is closing in, there's a very active vibrant inside and a pretty protective solid outside of it. That's one of the main features besides the park that, that climbs up in the middle. Um, as you will see on, on some of our drafts we're focusing on showing this as well. A third thing which is maybe visible only from closer is that in, in their designs, the Haha did architects uh, designed this whole um, podium level with these uh, terraces. Uh, that can remind us of uh, the Chinese tea plantations or, or rice fields. We've received some super nice references and as you can see in the model, it was also very inspiring. Um, maybe we will show you first a few of the drafts that we created for the project. I give you the controls, yes. Yoshi. And after that we're gonna create some new ones. All right, so let's see a couple of drafts we delivered um, in the very first phase of the project. Maybe let's just run through them, then we can create some new ones too. Yeah, we played with colors. Of course it was wasn't that hard to set up angles where we were showing super nice curves of the project. It's always a very rewarding thing to work with uh, such a great design. But to really show the essence of a project, uh, we had to pick wisely and uh, not all of these were successful in, in showing um, the main design intent. So. Working together with uh, Zaha, we, we've selected the ones that were really portraying uh, what's the essence of the, of the building. As you will see, some of these, uh, or the modified versions of some of these drops went through the, all the way to the final phase. I think let's jump into the deep and uh, let's check the base model, all what right. we created. In general, we spend a lot of time to prepare a nice base file for the drafts. Uh, in this case, we spent uh, more than one day because, as you can see, it's a it's quite big area. And That's pretty massive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you imagine that this tower is 400 meters tall, you can imagine how heavy the, this model is. <laughs> yeah. The guys did really a great job. We kept the layer structure and you can see the file already contains some nice uh, lights. Yeah, we won't show you the boring part of placing lights in a tedious way one by one, so we prepared it for you. Um, uh, we want to focus on creating the base concept of the draft. The necessary software is the scene manager. Yeah. I cannot work without this and I always tell the guys please use it because this is a super useful tool. You might be familiar with it, we showed it in other episodes, but if you haven't heard about it, it's a self-developed uh, program. It runs under the name of the brand Pools. This whole software development started uh, in Brick, now it has its own name the Pulse scene manager, but we use it every day if we have many cameras to work with or many different light setups to work with. Now you can see how I work with this software and how I set up the cameras and different moods and how I switch between the atmospheres 
and uh, the layer structure. So let's see. And we are gonna create some totally new ones now. Yeah, so it's yes, not yes. not pre-made, guys. We yes. <laughs> it's not like in the cooking shows when a I, camera angle is already baked in the oven. Yeah. Yoshi is gonna just play around here and it's set yeah, up yeah, some yeah. totally new ones. <laughs> yes, it, I'm I'm very exciting about this because are you stressed? Guys, yes, a bit because I'm not. I know you can set up some nice ones. <laughs> my, my my boys did really great job with the drafts and we made more than 30 uh, drafts. So after that, uh, it's a it's big a pressure real, real on my challenge. shoulder. Real challenge. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. So first of all, I want to turn on this because it's necessary. Uh, as you saw, we set up uh, mostly uh, portrait format because it's a huge building and uh, we want to see everything. Actually, the client always prefer to see everything. Yeah, of course, we are not saying that you cannot set up a landscape image for a, a tower, but if it's really 400 meters tall, maybe you, you want to go with the portrait format. So let's remember what the client uh, want. Uh, this spark goes up to the tower and I'm searching a nice angle somewhere here. Uh, maybe here. Okay, but first let's create a physical cam. Yeah, there were many uh, points down there around the podium where we could look into this gap. So again, it's a bit hard to find new ones, but uh, I think there are many possibilities, especially in such a cool project. So let's turn on the target. I want to look up, so I don't need the vertical tilt. Yeah, in these cases, if you start correcting the verticals on such a tall building it might get distorted crazy so most of these looking up shots we kept it with a with a simple perspective that that came out of it and select the camera okay i name it and you were saving it into the scene manager already yes setting yeah. up the resolution and here I can set up the aspect ratio, mid mm -hmm. size. That too will be really like in the scene manager. You don't have to worry about typing in the aspect ratio. I guess you are trying to catch something. Yeah, uh, uh, not in now. The I'm just exploring now. Okay, okay. And I want to set up quickly the cameras that I wanted to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's name it. So one from the bottom, looking up, looking into the hole. Yes, I deprecate it. Second, mm -hmm. I choose the second camera, which is now. I don't know where it. How will. many of these should we do today? Two, three. Uh, I don't know yet, but let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's make three. Actually, it's a great number. There are some guys behind the camera <laughs> asking for three. <laughs> The client wants 50. <laughs> Let um, us know in the comments. No, it's not live, so <laughs> let's say we do three today. <laughs> yeah. So let's go a bit far. For example, this mm -hmm. park is a great place. Yeah, as we mentioned, it was a key thing to, to, to show how the park is connecting to the building. So yeah, one camera in the park would totally make sense. And we had these nice roofs in the park. I see you, Yoshi, you are already trying to set it up. So, so these roofs are uh, working as foreground elements. Yes, because this glass roof uh, it would be nice if something reflecting on it. Ah, okay. <laughs> You're not saying it, but I can read your mind that we will have a glass surface here in the foreground and it's gonna reflect the tower. Okay. We really like the reflective things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wheat floor, water. 
yeah. less surfaces. All right. But this is just a rough setup. Maybe you play around with focal length later and we just jump to the next one. Yes. Oh. All right. So it renamed automatically. Let's create a new one. All right. Let's do it cowboy style. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's easy to go with some nice ground shots, but yeah, all right, let's let's do an area. Sometimes one the well. client want to see everything, and uh, this is the great uh, place where we can show everything. Especially if we have a cool prepared model like this. Yes. <laughs> but I okay, want to set up a cool. bit higher focal length because it's always mm -hmm. good. Okay, I wrong. I select this camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, usually we are not against doing uh, semi-aerial or aerial shots. Of course, it's much harder. You see everything. You see more of the ground. It's harder to catch a point where you can still connect to the, to the building itself or to the topic because you are just hovering there in the middle of nowhere. But we have scale here, real scale. So even if we fly up to 100 meters, we are not even above the roof level of, of this thingy. So it can be nice. Yeah, and when we are setting up the focal length of the camera, we, we usually try to focus on the proportions, like how big is the foreground element compared to the tower itself you might want to maximize uh, the presence of a, of a building in, in a frame, but in a way uh, that you are showing the context as well. If the goal is to show how the park goes into the project, you might want to show a bit more of the park. In this one, I guess you're just playing with the nice shapes. It's more like a two-dimensional composition. So we have these three seen what I set up and you can switch between them quickly and I can show my workgroup reader or creative director what <laughs> do you think about this <laughs> and it's super cool because you can switch very not, very not quickly too bad, I not too bad <laughs> in, in such a short time so I really like it uh, I want to adjust a bit maybe you had a tree here yeah, yeah, it can be coming, cool. coming, but I cannot see the uh -huh. correct shape of it. Uh, let's no, I switch. don't want to uh -huh. push you in any direction. I think you are feeling it already. But it can be interesting to have a tree coming in. Okay, for now I think it's mm -hmm. good enough. Let's start to find a nice reference for these views. Mm -hmm. Before we do that, maybe we can just tell the guys why do we like the composition of, of such an angle. Uh, I think it sounded or looked easy how you set it up, but I was really seeing what you are up to. I think it's, it's uh, really working and really powerful because we have a leading line here. Although you don't see it ending, you can feel that turns into the, into the middle of the building. Now that we have this tree, Luckily, we have a branch that's just pointing <laughs> into the project. And of course, we just have the lines of the building itself uh, also pointing inwards, uh, which really helps you to draw your intention into the core of it, uh, which we're gonna try to highlight. Yes. Let's yes. see how. Yes. And I want to uh, set up this tower to the third. Mm -hmm. Nice that or also but or maybe it's in close. golden ratio yeah golden ratio yeah and we can see these towers too how big mm -hmm. maybe a bit of homework you can see if this is third or golden ratio if you do the maths I see. of these two the right you can the you can figure it out <laughs> But uh, it feels all right, so it should be fine. Um, maybe let's, let's do a quick screenshot of the others too, uh, just okay. to give a bit of explanation. What I like about it, but you can also tell me what was on your mind, is that you already composed this uh, foreground element, which gives uh, an anchor point. 
so you see where you are i guess and these are characters right the yeah, forest of people i see yes i guess the character is gonna be something like this tall so we are kind of on human eye level which is great it's easy to connect to it let's see if the tower is reflecting in this Hopefully, yes. if we are lucky it does and again the placement of the tower it's it's balanced and nice uh, maybe this one is in the golden ratio let's see and uh, also you have some leading lines and this roof pointing to the tower of course this main path leading your eye into it and uh, this tower is just framing it nicely which i also like and i want to make this pavement a bit more refractive hopefully the guys already set up but uh, my dream is this tower will reflect on this nice paving all right so we have many opportunities for great reflections on this one yeah, yeah. okay and maybe the third one we can also check here uh, my main goal was of course to show everything but i really like the silhouette of these towers this was my secret wish hmm. to show this line all right no, nothing to add to it. I, I just enjoyed how you were setting it up and how it works uh, as a super nice two-dimensional composition. Uh, it has its own rhythm, a bigger shape, a medium one, then a gap, and then again a bigger shape, a gap, and a medium one. Maybe this can also work as a bigger shape. It, it, it has just a nice rhythm and that's it. Of course, we don't need to over sophisticated it just works nicely yeah and it's again a tower in a good place <laughs> yeah also because of the placement on the side the tower is placed a bit to the right if you look at it from this direction it also uh, drives us towards these compositions where we place it in the right third or the right golden ratio of the image but it works <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had some reference and Shenzhen is a very vibrant uh, city uh, but uh, for me it's a bit uh, too colorful uh, <laughs> but, do but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not usual in Budapest <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere in the world yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you can pick some colors from this uh, image if you don't know it it's color.adobe.com uh, we use it a lot um, to create nice color palettes or find of course we are not creating these uh, these already exist in the world um, but just to find the, the the best color palettes for our images so right. i'm really sure i want to make a, a red and green uh, and the general one uh, or uh, yellow and bluish and i want to say want to do something like this but let's mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's see as far as i remember the one of the reasons why we were looking into these color pairs is that it was a pretty strong request from the client to show uh, the two natures of of the design as we said it was uh, a, a very important part of the concept that it has a solid outer shell and and a much more see-through inner core yes you are highlighting it now yeah the shell is more reflective and this is more refractive uh, yeah and yeah. you can play with this. but it was a real challenge i think because both of them are glass and although one is not see-through the the other one is much more see-through it was still hard uh, to show the difference but as soon as we uh, started playing with colors complementary colors or triad colors uh, it, it was working out uh, very nicely and it was helping us to to show this uh, show the two sides of it and even we collected some ref other references you can see here the orange with greenish cyanish mm -hmm. i think most of this these we found on pinterest these are some photos of seoul uh, on a rainy day of course we get inspired of great movies as well or our computer games one of it 
is obviously the Blade Runner movie, the other one, the newest Blade Runner or the old one, you name it. Or um, you, you can get great inspirations like from computer games as well, like the new cyberpunk one uh, uses these uh, uh, color palettes heavily and we were not afraid to use it too. So I think it's time to save my file. Uh, <laughs> Maybe you should do first, it. Yeah. While it's saving, I want to collect these reference files. All right, so you're just uh, throwing them into Photoshop, I guess, to pick colors later. Yeah, yeah. All right. And as I see, almost every image is foggy. <laughs> Maybe we should do a foggy draft then. <laughs> Maybe that would be awesome for the ground level short. Do you have something in your mind already for that one? Mm, no, I'm just playing with the colors now and okay. after I will decide uh -huh. uh, which okay. is the best. Of course, for the light setup, it would be the best if we can see only everything with white color. Mm -hmm. Let's set up a simple mid-gray V-ray material. Ah, okay, so you're just doing an override material. Yeah. I want to override everything because okay. this file is not the mm -hmm. lightest one. We don't do white renders reviews. Uh, we did it in the past, but uh, to test lights, it's still useful thing to do that. So we are testing uh, the lights with an override setup, override material setup. Let's turn on every panel in the scene manager because this software has to know what should go with these lights. Mm -hmm. uh, I already set up, in the meantime I closed the settings, let's do the blue, yellow yeah. tone yeah. with some let's fog, with that. We, need a, we need a dark environment, create a new HD ray, mm -hmm. and let's set up a dark cloudy HD ray. It's a cool thing in the scene manager that you can just preview your HDRIs inside the program. So it's easy to select. Now we are looking for a, a, a dark night. Dark night, but uh, this is too dark and it contains some buildings. Maybe mm -hmm. this uh, cloudy is also cool. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna tweak it later, later yeah. in the frame buffer or photoshop in the frame buffer let's, mm -hmm. okay let's make a test all right it's uh, coming through it's dark actually yeah it's pretty it dark <laughs> and it actually has a bit of blue tone <laughs> yes might work this hdri seems to be working fine yes maybe cool. we should What's make it a bit brighter yeah. because it's easier to make it dark in Photoshop mm -hmm. instead of lighting up okay. a bit more. Actually it's nice it has a bit of bluish tone based on our references we might need need a bit of fog. Yeah and I okay. really like when the top of the tower disappear in, mm -hmm. in the fog. It might give us a nice depth. So it's super dark mm -hmm. but sometimes I use a simple box I can coordinate the environment for with the simple box so you're gonna add the box in the fog effect and then you can control the attenuation uh, that part will be excluded the or box include. part will include the environment or, or fog. Included. yeah okay okay cool nice trick fog is here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's we a can cool trick. see the edge of the box maybe we need a bit bigger one. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is too much because it's calculating from the edge of the box. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we accidentally turned back the selection display in the viewport. Feel free to turn it off. If you want. Okay. <laughs> so this fog is a bit too dark. Let's make it a bit brighter and. We can set the color as well, so mm. the blue tones will come nice. soon. 
By the way, of course, we are using the interactive here, so that's why this workstation is sweating now, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it still works with this heavy scene. Obviously, we are using an override material to do that. Change the transparency, now we can see a bit the top of the tower. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the first scene, let's stop it. Mm -hmm. Save these infos into the scene manager. Mm -hmm. So let's turn on the atmosphere, we use the lookup and we can keep this box visible because it's not renderable. Let's switch to the other scene. Okay, and for this one you also imagine a, a night one yeah, with, yeah, yeah, with yeah. some crazy shenzhen lights maybe inside maybe? Yeah, and of course we will make a sunset image as well. Uh, I would turn off the override material because I want to see those reflections. Yeah, let's see. I'm, I'm excited if we can have it as you imagine. And let's see what happens yeah, if we see. keep these parameters. And here, without any lights and the old fog what we used for the other scene. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, turn it off here because we don't need this one. Mm -hmm. All right, so you just turn off the fog turn for the this fog. one. And the frame buffer. Okay. It's time to turn on some lights because yeah, we don't we see, see, the see effects. too much here. So the exciting interior lights. Here we go. Already started. Did you imagine it like like this? Something like that? Mm, I think it looks like pretty dope. Yeah. <laughs> but still a bit dark. Mm -hmm. uh, let's pick up the settings again and set up it too. Now you are tweaking the HDRI, yeah. the overall multiplier. Okay. Nice. Sweet. Okay, and, and those lights are reflected in the in that glass roof in the foreground. Great job! But my problem is the HDR is too visible, so I need another environment fog, which is a bit, it works a bit differently. Mm -hmm. So let's create a new environment fog. Okay, we don't need box for this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's make it a bit bigger. And you are just doing this to hide HDRI itself, yeah. make it look like a dense fog behind it. A bit more for, let's turn off more light because I cannot affect the, cannot see the effect of the fog. Tower lit up, let's see, aha. Uh -huh. mm, okay, some craziness going on already. It's really nice how it's affecting the fog itself, so maybe we should keep that. Now you are just setting them up. Yeah, Real yeah. quick, like you would do on a simple drop day. Yes. And a bit of I this, mean. a bit of that, then you fine tune them. You yes. see which one works the best. That's how we usually do it. And we don't get stuck doing like all the way one of them. You guys might want to see like what's gonna happen with this job, but uh, how Yoshi is doing it is he's super fast setting up each of them to see um, which one will work. And then after that, when we see the three options, we, we can still choose or if we like all three of them, we can find you all three of them. And let's see this area image where I want to use this nice sunsetish foggy mood and let's create a sun. I'm really sure we need a sun. Okay, so did, did you use any HDRI for this version? No, I will use the simple, simple sun uh, and sky. Yeah, the improved sky, of course. So let's set up the other, the sunset mood. Let's use the simple sun somewhere here. Okay, yeah, let's set up the environment. And quickly we can set up the sun in the scene manager, which is... Where are you placing the sun? Is it gonna be backlit? Yeah, it's coming from behind the tower. Behind the tower, mm -hmm. yeah. We can see the nice silhouette in front of the bright sky. This sun is the very sun one. Yeah, actually, that's a typical setup when you are using a atmosphere, a fog or an aerial perspective, because whenever you have haze or fog in the air, it usually eliminates highlights 
and shadows. You already start seeing silhouettes, but uh, if you use a backlit light setup, it, it's even nicer. The image has a nicer depth. And you said you are using only a V-Ray Sun and Sky. We are using okay. V-Ray Next here, so it's the improved Sky model, which looks great. Cool. After we are finished with all three basic light setups, maybe we can pull a render, see what we have already, and then decide after that. Yeah, and I am so curious what will happen if we turn on all of the lights what this fire contains. Mm -hmm. That would be a game changer. On this second one we can already see that the lights will work very nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, the most important setup is the environment fog and the HDRI. Mm -hmm. If those two are working, it's a great start. All right, here comes the light cache. Let's see what's up. So it's super dark. <laughs> and these lights are really weird now. Mm -hmm. So I just turn off those. We need the calm sunset. Mm -hmm. Okay, and... I should add the other environment fog. Oh, I made mistakes because I didn't name it. And add, turn off. Hopefully it will not crash. Okay, mm -hmm. it's super clear. But... Uh, Looks cool. Yeah, but I need fog <laughs> <laughs> to hide the lot of these details. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, fog is helping us to differentiate our tower from the others because there are many tall buildings here, so we need our building to pop out. This one could also look cool. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> keep it and send it out. <laughs> we need a bit more transparent. A bit bigger. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now you were raising the fog height. And I want to see the sun. All right, bit. so you're yeah. gonna position. <laughs> yeah, right because the two buildings. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying now. Hmm. It's a bit burnt out. I already see what are you up uh -huh. to. Mm -hmm. Here the sun Correct. comes. Correct position. That's cool. So mm -hmm. we have this uh, orange tone. Mm -hmm. I don't want to play now the white balance because we have a lot of scene and I would change the fog color mm -hmm. because this can give it more red tones. Mm -hmm. That's nice. So we have this reddish, orangish tones and we need some green lights. Maybe we can take a look at our references again. We even had one more with, the, with that car. Maybe we, we can follow that. All right, so that's, that's the one that we've been looking for. Because this reference, what we have, is also super cool, but maybe for this uh, orangish tone, a green is, is nicer, works better. If you, if you want to see the, in, I think the interior light uh, would be nice if this is, uh, it, this will be uh, green. Mm -hmm. And the sun, of course, that, the other color, mm -hmm. red, orange. Mm -hmm. But we need a bit stronger environment fog. Mm -hmm. Let's, because let me try. Yes, let me try something because I trust this box technique. I'm working in bricks, so <laughs> the box. <laughs> Let's call it a big brick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe this will be a front. Yeah. This as a box, no, see through, it's too high. I want to see the top of the box, like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's open the environment settings. Let's see what happened, okay. Okay, so now you edit the box to the... To the environment fog, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, again to include include it only within the box. Yes, well, because I want to make the top of the fog a bit wavy. Mm, and I nice. want to use this box for this technique. Mm -hmm. uh, like if there were some wispy clouds. Yeah. All right. 
I'm this, always learning too. Yeah, this is a really easy technique. Yoshi just divided the box to have more vertices. And I, as I see, we are adding some, some noise to it. So the included part of the fog uh, will follow this shape and the top of the fog will be a bit wavy. Wow, cool. Something unexpected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can already see it slightly. It's not that smooth, but I expected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's better. Mm -hmm. Let's check the atmosphere element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. these details nice. are nice, I think. Super nice. And do you want to uh, try the lights now already? Mm, yes, let's try it. Yes. And after that maybe we can see what we did so far. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I just make a small render, very, very small, because I will use the light mix, which is a new feature in the V-Ray. So let's make a super raw render, let's see. Okay, so you already have some lights turned on? Yes. But not to, well, not as you want it. So you're gonna play with it here in the frame buffer. Yes. Okay, cool. Maybe we have a bloom effect that is a bit this stronger is, than yeah. what yeah. we wanted. But that's, that's all right. You can turn it off. As you say, you can see it's very noisy now, but it's good enough to set up the interior lights, which mm -hmm. is now is white, mm -hmm. green and stronger. Mm -hmm. Wow, and okay, that's nice. It's coming and the lens effect is too strong, too big, we don't need that. And we are doing this because it would be too slow to set it up in max, pull a render, set it again. So I want to mm -hmm. see the end result now and mm -hmm. it's not need to add to the scene now because you can save this mm -hmm. setup and use it later. So mm -hmm. now, now I just wanted to show you what will be my more or less setup. Yeah, OK, so we are sketching here basically yeah, sketching. Yeah, sketching. and uh, just trying different things out. I think this is gonna work. I can already see it. We have two options here, either save this back to the scene, or as you said, just save this setup. Save uh, this setup somewhere. Yeah, you can load it later. And the cool thing about this is that you can save different kind of setups. So if you wanted to try it with a purple light, we could do it. Yes. Uh, we just had a reference, so we already went for the green one. Again, now we were not using the interactive mode, but we pulled the render and uh, used the light mix. One of our favorite features in V-Ray Next, uh, because it's super effective for sketching. Sketching in 3D, let's, let's say it like that. I just set up this uh, environment fox and, I, fox and I turn off where we don't need. Mm -hmm. So you are just cleaning up the scene yeah, manager yeah. now a bit because yeah, when we when we sketch we might go a bit messy, but now we are. <laughs> no, I know you, man. Like it's already pretty tidy. So <laughs> even if you are messy, you are you end up being tidy. After yeah. the drop day, I always spend almost a half day to clean my files. So that's also a pro tip. Not even that unusual. Another pro tip, maybe we can save the file now. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so we have three different uh, camera setups, three amazing compositions, and uh, we have some general light setup for each one of them. How to choose, what's, what's next? First, I would like to check those lights, what the file contains, mm -hmm. and after that we can decide where should we go. We have a lot of options. We can work more in 3D or we can render all of them and uh, make uh, the post-production. So we're, we're gonna figure it out on, yes. on the way. Still just freestyling. Okay. Yeah. And we ha yeah, we haven't even tried the, the interior lights for this first one. So Maybe. curious how it looks like. Yes. Let's okay. uh, see. But first I would like to set up the layers in the scene manager. I should pick up these layers. 
the exterior light layers because just in case you don't know in the scene manager you can organize and anything basically from cameras to lights to layer setups on the different cards you can just set up what you need for each of the scene setups you might want to use now yoji is setting up cameras plus general lights plus the atmospheric effects and also some layer sets that he's gonna turn on for each scene setup so for this very first lookup option you just fetched the layer setup what was there in the yeah. layer manager wow okay i think it works what i'm missing the surrounding buildings lights mm -hmm. so now we should uh, try to make them so let's see what can we do with the surrounding buildings hopefully i just turn off this box what i used for the environment fog mm -hmm. and just easy display as a box we don't need this anymore let's show the geometries maybe it's faster if i'm not using the hdri in the background now we mm -hmm. have the whole surroundings and we always mm -hmm. collect the glass materials in a separated uh, layer which is here mm -hmm. Let's make a clone, mm -hmm. isolate them and let's attach everything. Yeah, if you want to know what just happened right now is that we have all our favorite scripts in a script bank. What script was this one? Script it was a quick button. This script is available from script spot. So you, you, ju you just made one object of all the glass and i add the simple white material to it and i need interior lights yeah this is just a collection of the materials that we use for interior lights some of them came with some packages that we bought on evermotion so let's adjust the texture on it Maybe it's too dense. <laughs> no, I think it's all right. It's a Let's check the big towers. Oh, it can be even smaller. That's cool, but for me, it's still a bit dense. You mean in the view it might look too busy? Yeah. Ah, okay. Then we can cheat, of course. Okay, and let's make a test render. You see? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Although this is realistic, <laughs> might be a bit too busy. Yeah, in these cases, we sometimes just cheat because uh, sometimes reality not the best way. But I have a solution for this. Mm -hmm. Let's make a composite material. Mm -hmm. For for making a scale that, that works for every, every view. Blend material. Blend material. Okay. And let's copy here this. Let's turn off these just for a test. Okay, and put here the tiles here. Let's make it visible. Okay. You are, you made the blend material. Yes. And you are blending one night texture on the other based on the tiles, or blending one night facade material on a simple gray surface. Yes, yes, yes. Using the okay. uh, tiles. Just because I want to see what's going. Can mix a bit random. Uh, I would give here another ID mm -hmm. and here another UV map. Mm -hmm. Channel 2. Make it again visible. Okay. And make. Okay. You guys might not see it on the same screen now, but uh, Yoji is setting up another UV. Okay, and let's blur it like this mm -hmm. and make a test. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Interesting. Not bad, but I can feel the tiles, so mm -hmm. it's time to play with it. I think That's this should be... Again, I'm learning something new. 
So you wanted this to be more random, like if in some of the offices they are already at home, not working, lights turned down. Okay, That's I think it's better now. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. And uh, okay. after uh, this, of course, this is just a base. And after mm -hmm. in Photoshop, you can play with these lights more, yeah. put another tower. And still we are just sketching. So if you want to push this to a final quality, you might want to play with it more. But for a quick sketch, I think it's awesome. Nice yes, trick. we have reflection. Okay, that's what I wanted to check. Maybe their power is too big. Okay, let's make it a bit weak. Mm -hmm. You mean you adjusted the strength of yes. the lights? Okay, cool. I think that's cool. Let's see what you cooked. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. Or building this Looks helps cool. to hide the tiling yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the ties you made on purpose is looking awesome. Okay, I think I will use this trick. I, I, yes, <laughs> and I would stop uh, with this angle, with this mode, because we can do everything in Photoshop and yes. let's jump into I the other one. This one is set up, maybe we render them in one go, because we can do it in Scene Manager, just do a batch render for the three. But if you say that you, yes. you are happy with I, it, I am. I am happy. I think Sorry. we don't need any lights turn on because it uh -huh. interior lights fog is enough now okay and we have two really nice colors for this yes okay you can also adjust it in photoshop if you need so okay let's stop this angle one checked <laughs> all right we can jump let's to the next see one. The other actually for the second one that is from the park this ground angle we've already seen some nice light but we might want to double check before we render all, the, all yes, of it. Yes, yes. Okay. And I think we need to turn on the uh, tower lit up. I really like to do this in interactive render mode because I can see the changes. Mm -hmm. Even if the scene is heavy. Yes. Of course, we did a lot of cleaning on this file already. So just to be realistic, you need to have a very clean file. And, and we did set up the interior light intensities already. Uh, we just didn't want to be boring with that. Anything else is just cooking right now live in Yoji's mm, kitchen. Yeah. The guys did a really great job with the interior lights. We had a lot of different technique. How can we put interior lights in the towers? Maybe you can say two words like how... In general, it? we just uh, place a forest with a simple box on the slabs mm -hmm. and after we replace mm -hmm. it, those box with the light. It sounds easy, but sometimes, for example, with this very detailed uh, high poly slabs, it was a bit hard, <laughs> but uh, they solved it. Actually, with the newest, newest forest track, you can forest some lights, but back then when we were doing it, we didn't have such a thing, so that's why you guys were using yeah, this yeah. technique. Then we made it. Distributing boxes and then changing it yeah. to lights. This is an old habit. <laughs> All right. So now it's a bit boring and dark and the fog is too strong, uh, mm -hmm. but as I remember, we turned on this our lit up lights which is a light from below yes which yeah. works amazingly with this fog i love it okay still a bit dark but we can adjust it easily mm -hmm. you mean the overall scene yeah. is a bit too dark let's change first the camera iso mm -hmm. yeah actually so far we were going with pretty basic camera setups yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to touch the lights because uh, we are doing uh, three different uh, angles, mm -hmm. three different setup, and uh, uh, on the previous uh, setup, uh, the interior were lights nice. were yeah. nice, but here it's a bit weak. Of course, you can adjust it with the light mix perfectly, mm -hmm. but now I want to cheat. 
Yeah, but if we turn on more lights. Yeah, yeah, because the ISO change just brightened it up, the whole thing. Yeah. So again, these setups are not necessarily for a final render. Now we just don't want to touch the light intensities because we want to work efficiently, sketch very fast in 3D. Uh, so we are keeping the light intensities like as they are. All right, so you just turned on some fake lights on the podium to... Fake lights, actually almost every light, except these lights uh -huh. above the camera. You don't want the foreground, of, of course, to be too bright, so... Yeah. Hopefully this paving can reflect. I really like how they appear in the fog, nice and volumetric. Maybe these up lights can be a bit stronger. And do you want to tweak it here or can we do that also in the light mix? Actually we can do with the light mix. Before that I want to check this paving material because mm -hmm. I expected more reflections and more white tones. Yeah, it has some reflection but okay. yeah, I would wish for a bit more. Of course it's depending on the light because here it's very subtle. You mean the interior light? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Quite subtle. Just want to check the map as well. Mm -hmm. Is that the pavement? Yes, yes. The first slot. It's very oh. reflective. Let's make it super reflective. Okay, it comes. Mm -hmm. It's a wet paving. Okay. Okay, for me, this is also enough to make something nice. Let's continue this as well in yeah. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. And we are we are not stopping here just pushing forward yeah, to yeah. have as many cool drafts as possible do we have enough reflection on the glass we see something yes yes okay are. nice uh, then we should just check the last one the last one the sunset but actually what i'm missing is to see the busy streets in a shenzhen night mm -hmm. maybe we can do that too so I would just clone this setup. Ah, you mean you want to try this second setup on the third camera? Yes. Okay, let's try that. Why not? And go here. Uh -huh. So in the scene manager you just made a clone of that? Yes, and I changed the camera here. Area 4, the resolution should be the same. Mm hmm, mm, what a nice number. Yeah, I can already see the setup there. Uh -huh, there are a lot of street light and maybe we should zoom in a bit. We see too much from the park. I guess you don't want to lose that building on the left. Just crop a bit of the park. Maybe that can be a good tip composition wise to all of you watching this is that if there's a shape at the, at the edge of the image and it ends right before the end, edge of the image, you might want to crop it instead of letting it end right next to the image, edge of the image because <clears throat> it, it might draw some attention. So at the bottom of, the, of this uh, frame, we had these glass skylights ending and uh, Yoshi just cropped those. It looks nicer, doesn't draw too much attention. We don't have an empty, street at the bottom of the image it's just the roof running out of the frame and you didn't want to see uh, as many lights either so we're just literally testing out the other light setup we've made for the other camera on on this one yeah because as i remember we rendered mm, out this uh, sunset mood uh -huh. and it was enough for me uh, that interior light and the sunset with these interior lights in the surrounding buildings that would be enough i'm just curious what aha uh -huh. cool but i cannot see the busy street maybe it's because dark. of the fog yes and the i think it's yeah. there it's just the, ha the fog is maybe a bit too heavy yeah and i miss the blue tones yeah if we want Excellent. to go with something like that reference we might need to tweak it let's start uh, oh. First of all, I should create a new environment for. Mm -hmm. I set up here the new one. Mm -hmm. 
And press the interactive and button again. What did you change? So just I just created a new environment for and I which which has usually pretty good depth by default. Mm, default it's not good because it's super low and uh, very dark. Now I just wanted to start an interactive render because we cannot set up the best. Mm -hmm. You are going to tweak it in the interactive. Yes. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't crash. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it's terrible now. <laughs> it's certainly much more visible, but maybe not that appealing. But it, that's just the basic setup of the yeah. fog. We were expecting this. No worries. The Freaked same setup about. that I used previously. Bright, bluish, uh -huh. a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Now the street light is coming. Maybe you can show quickly to the guys and the reference what we are chasing for the street lights. That, that's the reference you showed me. And uh, I guess we are trying to create a busy street like this. We already have the lights there, it's just uh, hidden by the fog. Mm -hmm. And these lights set up low multipliers. But you, you can tweak it later yes. if you want. Yeah. Actually, I want it now because I'm uh -huh. happy with the fog color. I'm happy or with these uh, HDRI details. Uh -huh. That's super nice. Uh, but the street lights are not strong, interior lights are a bit boring. So it's time to make a render uh -huh. and play with the light mix. Ooh, again, my favorite part. Okay, let's, let's do that. It's just so much fun to play with the light mix. There's only one more thing that's even more fun to watch you do that. <laughs> because I don't even have to try anything else. Just see how it comes out when you... Okay, we then need you. this high resolution. 1000 is enough. And low render quality. We can go crazy. And <laughs> press the render button and let's see. Was there any specific reason why you tweaked the settings? I don't just... want to wait. All right. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> All right, but it would have worked with the other setup or a lower setting, it doesn't matter. And again, the reason why you um, test it in the light mix is just to be able to test out different light scenarios very fast. And after that, we have two options, either save back the settings into the scene or just save it as it is. So the render is coming. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. Just finishing it up. Okay, let's see our reference. Yeah, we need some light for sure. Yeah. It looks super weak, but mm -hmm. I know my plan. Okay, we are just waiting for the render to finish and the frame buffer to save it. Okay, so let's see the first thing. As we can see, the street lights are strong and warm. Let's set up this first. Okay, street lights strong and warm. Yes. Warm tones. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit more warm and a bit stronger. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> the second is the interior lights, which is mm -hmm. also very weak. You mean inside the tower? Inside the tower, yeah, oh, inside okay. our tower. And but the orange mm -hmm. is still a bit boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess we need more than just blues and oranges in this one. Mm -hmm. All right, greenish. The greenish tint might work well with this color palette. Did you already pick some colors in on the Adobe side? First, I I trust in my eye and mm -hmm. just then we fine tune it later yes. if you want to. Okay. Paint tower, the upper part. It's cool because it's 
save the previous color. Mm -hmm. All right, so the lights are split into two halves. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. because the lower part is more detailed and it's uh -huh. not the same uh -huh. size. Okay, roll it up. Oh, okay. That's already now, cool. <laughs> now we are talking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. all. So cool. Okay, we need some lights under this roof. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we cannot see and this is also cool we can set up the self-illumination mm -hmm. but it's a bit strong and we can as i think we can cheat mm -hmm. yeah previously you you've set it up for whitish yellowish yeah but we can change here mm -hmm. nice how is it on your reference I it's all different in all different towers. Yeah, but it looks almost at the white. back almost white, a bit bluish maybe. So it's cool, but you might not want to make it too prominent, otherwise it's stealing the focus of our tower. Yeah. So we have a lot of lights in the scene. Mm -hmm. Park trees on the roof. Let's see what happened under the roof. The park. Mm -hmm. We don't need this strong, and we can set up that. Yeah, the, I think the hard thing here is that you you can be super ex excited about one light turning up and the value of play with the light mix, but you should always see the big picture to keep keep the visual concept of the image because. Although these surrounding lights are looking great, you want the viewer to focus on the project itself. So it's too easy to get excited about light mix. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to keep the, the image concept, but Yoshi is doing it great. We are still focusing on the tower. Because we have nice fake lights in the podium. is also great mm -hmm. and what I'm missing is the this park lights very strong light let's see what does this Oof. Mm -hmm. nice okay this can be a bit less warm than the street light to differentiate it actually yes this was one of the main paths towards the building what we have in the middle down there so it's better if it's a bit differentiated from the others and i see you made some crazy lights on the crown of the project was it a <laughs> client's uh, request or you just having fun yes i'm just having fun All because right. some uh, magenta tones i need might, some magenta might tones work with yeah. this but well, we might need a few more here and there later yeah. we uh -huh. have a lot but uh, later we can uh, do these interior lights also magenta okay okay i see the concept it really fits the color palette but yeah you might need it here and there on the image yeah, yeah. i guess you want to do that more in photoshop not here and now we can save this yeah. so after this you can reset and set up another version or we can go back to the previous render uh, you still still have the light mix of this one yes cool nice that's why it's cool if you save it, yeah, and you and can just here. start playing around again. So that's cool. All and right. Here we can load again. Nice. I think Super we are ready with the uh, 3ds Max part of the drafts. So we're going to press the batch render button on the scene manager and maybe we well deserved uh, coffee. So while we are having a little coffee break, the, the computer will render all of these setups so, so that we can see what we've made so far. And then we, we see if we fine tune one or two of these. Yeah. We will come back to the Photoshop part. Yeah, let's see what we have. We had a little coffee break, everything rendered. We just uh, want to fine tune one of the shots a bit because we are quite happy with the rest. This is super cool already. 
Here we just need to play with the colors. Yeah, and do some matte paintings. Maybe a bit of matte painting very fast. On this one also, maybe a bit of fun with the colors, but we already know what we would like to do because we tested it in the light mix. There was just one that we wanted to tweak a bit before we no. say it's finished or we before we want to continue with that. To be honest, we still don't know which one we are going to pick, but let's do some final tweaks on that yeah. one. Before we start to play with this, I just wanted to mention here, uh, we will try two way. Uh, how can we build up these uh, renders or post-production? As you can see, we already prepared these lights here and here I will do it in just Photoshop. Let's check this ground night shot mm -hmm. because it's still dark, but we can tweak it a bit. Let's do some funky magenta. Yeah, let's go a bit crazier. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's super nice. We need the upper part with the same color, strong, more. Mm -hmm. Ah, more. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's really nice how the reflection goes with the mm -hmm. values. Of course, it's not a crazy fine-tuned material with puddles and whatever, but we just don't want to waste time on that right now. Yeah. Ooh, and this is just a drop day, so mm -hmm. here we don't need that mm -hmm. details. Mm -hmm. And these fake lights work very nicely with the fog. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, I think four is enough. Yeah, yeah. And the top of the tower we have... Uh-huh, wow. It's crazy. What if it's red? Let's try that. Oh, no. Green. I like the blue. The mm -hmm. Cold tones. Mm -hmm. Okay, the environment is still a bit dark. Uh -huh, nice mm -hmm. cloud details. Wow, this is nice. the HDRI and the self-illumination of the surrounding buildings mm -hmm. is also weak. So make it like this and mm -hmm. what is Super this? Cool. Orange? No. I liked it when it was a bit warmer. At least one little part is a bit warmer. What do you think? Like this? Mm. Or even yellow. I know that's too boring compared to the tower but or orangish. Oh. I can understand. So actually for me... Don't it's... we need a bit more blue in the sky maybe? In the sky? I never tried to do this, but... Uh -huh. Apparently you but... can. Yeah, it's a bit weird because you are tweaking a HDRI with a color, but it right. seems to be working. <laughs> <laughs> what if we turn on the lights under the roof? We are able to do that, so... Why not trying it? Mm. Interesting, but we are losing the focus yes. with this one. Maybe we don't like that. But if it's just the same color. All right, pretty interesting. Can we save it? Yeah, let's okay. do that. While it's saving, maybe we can check the reference for this, what we had. Actually, you were right about the warm tones. We don't have too much of those there. Maybe we can make them a bit more reddish, the, the lights on the yeah. towers. Mm -hmm. Although it gives a nice little detail, but maybe it's too much. Yeah, just put these together in one page. It's gonna be fun to see them. You've just made in such a short time. All of them are looking great. They all have a high potential. We can finalize any of these and it's gonna be cool which which one's your favorite actually this ground night uh, fog image became my favorite but uh, mm -hmm. i want to show the sunset foggy image you still have some techniques and tricks yeah. in your pocket yeah, that yeah. you can share with yes. the, with the guys on this one i All right. think this is just interesting things how can we mm -hmm. do it in photoshop how can we build up a render from right. the with so, the light mix. So kind of the 3D part ends here. We pushed it as far as we could, but it wouldn't be us if we didn't do a bit of Photoshop work <laughs> on, on it. So I would say let's do it. Okay, so this is our render. Mm -hmm. 
This light mix can save out the environment separately, the interior lights as well. So we can put together easily with the screen blending mode. I make it bright. Mm -hmm. I make it green. And you already know what you wanted to do because yes, we because tested it in the light mix. We just didn't save it back to the scene. Yes, because I wanted to show this mm -hmm. as well, screen. But all of you watching, you can see how you can do it in, in other ways too. You've seen it, how it works in the 3D, in light mix. And now we are doing it in Photoshop. Yeah, we don't need this light that much on the top of the tower we need here because as we discussed at the beginning this tower built up with the reflective core uh, shell and refractive core so you can show the two natures of this design yes. and we need the fog atmosphere that's awesome with this wavy mm -hmm. box technique i will use it myself <laughs> later Thanks for it's teaching this. Useful. Yeah, uh, as you guys can see, Yoji is placing each of these elements in, in uh, groups in Photoshop and setting the blending mode of each of these groups to screen right now. But of course, you can use anything you like. We just usually do it like this. You don't need to link or parent layers inside the group. Once it's set to a blending mode, you can do whatever inside. Yoshi could tweak the brightness, the color inside the group uh, without being worried about losing the parenting of the layers. And uh, it's just also much more organized looking this way. Nice. Just as a reminder, we are using this orange and greenish tone because we already did a bit of research at the beginning and we picked a color scheme like that on the adobe.color.com. Do you have that saved, that color palette? Actually not, but we can Google it again. Yeah, complimentary. Red, green tones. Actually, you can find this tool in Photoshop too. We know it, and it's just more handy for us to use the adobe.color.com site for us for some reason. By the way, it has a feature. If you throw in an image, uh, you can analyze it and it, it can give you the key colors of that. We don't need it right now because we are making those colors but just to cross-check ourselves, we can we can use it. So actually, I built up this uh, render from the environment element and just placed like this interior lights, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mainly I used around the horizon and I put sun on top of it. Also from an element. Yes, yes. Maybe some basic. more reddish and the green tones should be more green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually that's what I wanted to ask, like on the on the color wheel on adobe.color.com you had a bit more reddish, not orange, but I see that you are already fixing that and it works nicely. And just here we need some blue tones here. Mm -hmm. It's getting closer, final result, mm -hmm. what I want. Okay, so the surrounding buildings we need. Maybe you pick it from the other one? Yes. Yeah. That also can work, but if we want to fix it in Photoshop, we can do it. If we put it in the top of this, I select the glasses, I make a mask. And I search a nice interior. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah, so if you want, you can use the technique that Yoji just showed before with the blend material and tiles, which I'm for sure gonna use from now on. Or just do it the old school way and yeah. quickly matte paint it. If you are drafting, you 
don't need more precision than this. Just nice and fast. Just some very weak interiors. This can also be a bit more. Yeah. Just to give a bit of realism to those towers. If you look at it from far, even from this far when I'm sitting, it looks amazing. <laughs> cool, thank you. So actually this image is already good enough for the draft round. The mm -hmm. client can decide this is the way where he wants to go mm -hmm. or not. We can jump on the other view here, which is already looks great. All right. Let's do this one as well if you want, uh, yeah. or should we just tweak the other one, or we just tweak these two, maybe, mm, today? We can. we can do both, this and the ground level as well. Maybe the, the third one only needs a bit of brightness contrast, that's it. Yes. <laughs> it's already looking great. Curves, yeah. I, uh, I agree, maybe we have more things to show on the other two. Yeah. Cool, what's next? We are gonna Photoshop this beauty. Yes, let's do this. I think we don't have too much thing to do uh -huh. on this, but let's do some minor touch. I'll show you quickly. First, I always do the contrast. I'm not sure about this screen, but this is what I feel here. Uh -huh. Let's check the render elements. Uh, maybe we have a nice atmosphere. That can be useful. Ooh, we could we could yeah, use those yeah. fake lights from it. Yes, it also looks nice. We have the glass multi mask, and we need wire color for the background because that's missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually we use the multi matte element uh, for selecting sort of anything because uh, it's much more precise you don't have anti-aliasing uh, difficulties or errors uh, on the edges because if you just uh, select something from the wire color you might have these artifacts but if you just select the channel on a multi matte element it's precise and you really select what you need to select so let's try to find something in the background I think it's easy because it's very far. Why yeah. not using the reference? Yay! Yes. <laughs> of course, you it's can. Logical. Yeah, it's logical. I create a mask for it. What else can you find that's better match matching than your own reference? Okay. Nice. See. It works. Uh, of course, you might want to use a part that's not identifiable that yeah. much. Well, that's nice this and generic make it a bit more contrasty you mm -hmm. don't need the sky mm -hmm. uh, of course this mask is not the perfect mm -hmm. i need only here mm -hmm. nice i need like this effect how this mm -hmm. fog goes up to the mm -hmm. sky the color is not correct yet we should make the highlights a bit more bluish Mm -hmm. More contrast. Okay, the highlights. Yeah, that's enough. Mm -hmm. Let's put a nice atmosphere on the top of this. Yeah, because we want to emphasize the fogginess of this image even more. Yeah, but I can show a quick trick how can we do more fogs. Okay, the sky is a bit too bright or actually the whole top part yeah it's stealing the focus a bit okay. mm -hmm. and let's check these interiors uh, i will set up this to the screen and now you are using um, an element that you got from the light mix. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask you if you would like to tweak the color of yeah. those because in the middle they are a bit too similar to the outer core, but it's already much better. I'll just make it a bit more. Make greenish. Yeah. Greenish, yeah. 
and not everywhere because the top of the tower is now it's too greenish but just mm -hmm. mask it back maybe you can add a bit of yellow Tiny. on the top like everywhere let's see maybe not too much maybe not red but yellow more yellow mm -hmm. kind of okay and what i'm missing is this effect or reflection of the surrounding buildings but i saw this lighting is contains something let's the check. lighting element yes uh -huh. let's check the lighting element mm. you see it's there i don't see too much but i'm sure it's there <laughs> let's make it Sun. more visible Sun. like you this need to be, oh nice okay. that's what i'm missing mm -hmm. let's get back so this so the illumination yeah the illumination mm -hmm. is missing for me mm -hmm. okay and let's make the whites a bit stronger actually maybe the only thing i'm missing now is is the pinkish color that we have on the crown of the tower mm -hmm. here and there all right so we want to change the color of the towers yeah you have a mask for it let's select the red colors let's make a mask mm -hmm. and let's and colorize change the hue mm -hmm. to something crazy Maybe something that's already matching the mm -hmm. top of the tower. Maybe. Yeah. And mask it back where we need. Yeah, whenever you like. A light here. I just noticed something that maybe that mask can be a bit more bright. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a bit grayish. Yeah, it's true. Just to boost up its effect. Mm -hmm. If you make it a bit more contrasty, some of them in the foreground. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. that's a nice little touch to it. And let's see those up lights. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see that you've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure about this. Is it help or not? But I think here and there it really emphasizes the foggy nature of this one, so maybe higher up it hides the, a bit the details, but it definitely helps. Okay, and I want to make another test. Mm -hmm. Consimilar. I'm excited because I have no idea what you are doing. <laughs> Just some haziness effect on the street. Ah, okay. Here, mainly Just a bit of around. Glow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes more realistic, I assume. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can still cross check this one with your reference. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think we are already nicer than the. <laughs> than reality which is good maybe on the streets i could uh, imagine a bit more reddish orangish tone now that i was checking your reference maybe less yellow but more orange that's the only thing i've noticed and maybe the blue can be a bit more bluish interior this like in general yeah in general mm -hmm. somehow it mm -hmm. popping out more okay and maybe a bit more red to the streets mm -hmm. i think if, especially if you check those blue pink red references i think it yeah it really works nicely if you have some strong reds here and mm -hmm. there what do you think yeah, I can agree. Nice. 
I like it. Great job. Okay, this is for the draft. All right, so we've kind of finalized two of these. Yeah. Maybe we can take a, another look at them side by side. Great job. Really amazing work. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Yoshi. You I've learned a lot of things. I hope you guys learned some new stuff too. That's how we make a draft, let's say 80% in 3D. A bit of Photoshop, um, but the most of it was done already in the render. Of course, it needed a little love and, and uh, feeling in Photoshop, but right now we were focusing on making it more in 3D. Which was the necessary tools, scene manager, light mix. Yes. Photoshop. <laughs> and an artist who can <laughs> who can really make it thank you very much again thank you for a really great job i hope you guys enjoyed don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on facebook next time i heard that maybe we're gonna be showing you some uh, fun tips and tricks how you can work with scripts in max Keep an eye out for, for that next webinar and thanks for watching. See you guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.